Hi guys and welcome to Eduraca Learning. This is Lakbir here and today we are going to dive into the introduction of Kubernetes and get a comprehensive understanding that gives you more than enough idea about what it is. But before we begin, if you are new to this channel, do consider subscribing as we upload new videos on leading technologies every day. Also, hit the like button and if you are looking for online certification on DevOps, check out the links in the description box below. So, let's start by defining our agenda. These are what is Kubernetes or K8, why you need K8, how Kubernetes is useful, features of Kubernetes, and then we will look at what Kubernetes is and is not, and later on we will have a hands on demo. So, stay till the end of this video to apply what we are learning. So, what is Kubernetes? Kubernetes, also known as K8, is an open source system meant for automating deployment, scaling, and management of containerized app, and it is used alongside Docker in most cases, which is the leading container solution in the market. The containerized applications are essentially packaged applications that run in isolated environments called containers. These containers encapsulate app with all dependencies like libraries, binaries, and system files. Also, one quick fact about Kubernetes is that it was developed by Google and written in the Go language. Since Google made it, it was heavily tested even before it was launched in the market. So, it has a reliability factor to it. Now, let's look at the need of Kubernetes. First, containers are a good way to run your applications reliably. So, you don't need them to fail when operating in production. In a production environment, you need to manage the containers that run applications and ensure that there is no downtime. This is what Kubernetes does as it enables everything to operate smoothly. Kubernetes provides you with self-healing, secret management and configuration management and load balancing in addition to service discovery. First, let's take a look at self-healing part. This is one of the favorite things about Kubernetes according to me as Kubernetes can restart containers that fail and replace container and kill those containers that don't respond to user-defined health check parameters. The secret and configuration management lets you store and manage sensitive information like password and tokens or SSH keys. It deploys and updates secrets and app configuration without the need for rebuilding the container image entirely and load balancing. If the traffic is high, Kubernetes is able to load balance. This distributes the network traffic so that deployment is stable. Now, let's look at how Kubernetes is useful. To understand that, we have to take a short history lesson. At first, we had traditional deployment era in which organization ran applications on physical servers. During this time, there was no way to define boundaries for applications and this resulted in resource allocation issues and multiple others. As a solution to this, virtual era came, which allowed for multiple VMs to run on a single physical server CPU. Virtualization allowed applications to be isolated between VMs and provide a level of security and better utilization of resources in a physical server. This also allows for better scalability because applications can be added or updated easily. Now, the VMs were amazing as they were, but containers took it to another level. The containers have relaxed isolation properties to share the operating system among applications. This makes them lightweight. Decoupled from underlying infrastructure, the containers are portable across clouds and OS distribution. This brings us to the usefulness of Kubernetes. First, it should be understood that Kubernetes manages containers. Though other containerization apps exist like RunC and Containerd, Docker is the most popular and Kubernetes is compliant with it. Second, Kubernetes is compatible with almost every platform you can think of. One of the easiest way to use Kubernetes is with the Google Cloud Platform in my opinion. But you can use it with AWS or other clouds as well. Third. Kubernetes is highly secure as it implements role-based access control, also known as RBAC. 
think of this as assigning privileges for different users according to their needs. You can define a role and the rights for that user to ensure that non-privileged users cannot make unwanted changes to the network. Fourth, Kubernetes is highly available. Using multiple replicas of pods, if one fails, it can replace it immediately, ensuring the smooth operations of everything on the network. And finally, Kubernetes has a big community and it was built by Google. So it has a huge community that is engaged and working to fix any bugs and solve any potential issues with Kubernetes. Features of Kubernetes. Here we look at major Kubernetes features. These are automatic bin packing. You can provide Kubernetes with a cluster of nodes that it can use to run containerized tasks. You can tell Kubernetes how much CPU and memory each container requires. Kubernetes can fit containers onto the nodes to make the best use of the resources available. Storage orchestration. Kubernetes allows you to automatically mount the storage system of your choice, which can either be local or cloud storage. Open source. Since the project is open source, you can look at the code and identify and even make changes and help out the project and community by improving it further. Automatic rollbacks and rollouts. You can describe the desired state for your deployed containers using Kubernetes and it can change the actual state to the desired state at a controlled rate. Service discovery and load balancing. Kubernetes can expose a container using the DNS name or using their own IP address. If traffic to a container is high, Kubernetes is able to load balance and distribute the network traffic so that Deployment is stable. Secret and configuration management. As talked before, you can store and manage passwords, tokens, or keys using Kubernetes effectively without exposing secrets in your stack configuration. And lastly, self-healing. We talked about this before. It is the feature of Kubernetes that make it fail-safe, where it can replace failed containers and kill those containers that don't respond or it can restart containers. Now, let's talk about what Kubernetes is and what it is not. Some common misconception that we know about Kubernetes are that it is for containerizing applications and that it is replacement for Docker and that it is best for every app that ever exists. So let's clarify. Kubernetes is best suited for applications with microservices architecture. Using Kubernetes with a simple architecture applications is not ideal and can even lead to performance issues. It is not a replacement for Docker. It just adds to the capabilities of a container tool by managing things better. Lastly, Kubernetes is a container orchestration platform, period. Orchestration is management. And you can think of Kubernetes as a conductor controlling the music played by a group of musicians. Now, this is where we will get our hands dirty. So let's dive into the demo. Here on my GCP, I have my master node and my worker node deployed. I have already set this up. So let me go ahead and show you. Now, our objective here is to deploy an Nginx web server. Here, I have my master node. And my worker node has already been set up using my GCP. So if I type in here kubectl get nodes, I can see my worker node on which I'm currently working and my worker node which is connected. Now, as our objective is to deploy an Nginx web server, I'll be writing some commands here. So let's create the deployment. I do this by typing this command. Now that I have deployed this, I can see it as well. Now, as you can see, I have one deployment ready to go. You can find out more information about this by typing in kubectl describe deployment followed by the name of your deployment. So here you can click at the information available. So as it says here, we have nginx container and we provided the image of Nginx. And you can see other variables here such as replica sets as well. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create the service.
Now, by typing this command, what we have essentially done is that we have launched a nginx deployment. So you can get more information about that using this command. So if you look at here, it says that nginx was of the type node port, which we already specified, and it has been launched on this port number. So if I type in here this command, followed by the port number, we should get the welcome page of nginx. We can also do this by running this command, which essentially says that it is accessible for every worker node as well. And as you can see, it is accessible. We can again verify this by going to the external IP and adding in the port number. So here, I go to my external IP in my GCP. I copy this, followed by my port. So this is my port and I'll copy this onto my browser with my external IP address. And as you can see, we get a confirmation and we were successfully able to deploy our Nginx web server. And with that, the demo is concluded. If you have any questions about Kubernetes or want to learn more, head over to the documentation of Kubernetes and check out the DevOps course. Links in the description. Thanks for watching and have a great DevOps journey. I hope you have enjoyed listening to this video. Please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries and we will reply them at the earliest. Do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to Edureka channel to learn more. Happy learning!